This question is from 2015 MIT Integration B. So of course they gave us power of x to the 2015th power. So we have to evaluate integral from 0 to infinity of 1 over the quantity 1 plus x to the 2015 times 1 plus x squared dx. So how can we attack this question? Some of you may have an idea of using partial fraction decomposition. Partial fraction decomposition. Maybe divide this to a over 1 plus x to the 2015 plus b over 1 plus x squared. But realize that's really not going to work in this case. Because when you're trying to use a partial fraction decomposition, you have to reduce this. You have to reduce the denominator to linear forms and irreducible quadratic forms. You have to write it in linear and irreducible quadratic over the reals. And in this case, we have to factor 1 plus x to the 2015 many, many times until you only have linear and quadratic and then do partial fraction decomposition. That's going to take a long time and I'm not sure if that's an elegant way of attacking it. So let's not try partial fraction decomposition and let's try to find some other way of trying to find the solution. So what can we do? Oh, let's make sure we have the integral to work with. Realize that we don't have anything in the, numer in the numerator and that's making this question very difficult. When everything is at the denominator, it's usually very hard to work with those. If you think about, if, if this fraction was flipped, if you did not have one over this, this thing is very easy to evaluate. All you have to do is FOIL and since you have to infinity, it's not going to converge, but it's, very, it's going to be very easy to anti-differentiate the function inside. So maybe we can use u substitution u equals to 1 over x. Maybe that's going to flip some things. And u equals to 1 over, 1 over x is usually a good thing to do when you have a lot of variables in the denominator and you want some numerator to pop up. So let's try using u equals to 1 over x and see if we can engender any changes in this integral. So what are we going to do? So we know, we know x is equal to 1 over u or dx is equal to negative 1 over u squared du, just differentiating this, u to the negative 1. So let's try to write this in terms of u. When x is 0, when x is 0, realize you're going from 0 to infinity. So think about x becoming 0. So u equals to 1 over x. And as you, x is getting closer and closer to 0, as x is 0 0.1, 0 0.01, 0 0.001, realize u is approaching positive infinity because 1 over 0 0.1 is 10, 1 over 0 0.01 is 100, 1 over 0 0.001 is 1000, and u is getting very large as you, x is approaching 0. So the corresponding va value, remember that you have to change the bounds correspondingly when you use change of variable technique. So you have to go from u equals to infinity because that's what x equals to 0 corresponds to. And the x equals to infinity, when you think of this denominator of the fraction increasing without bound, u is going to approach 0. So you have to change bounds appropriately to infinity and 0. And we have 1 over, what do we have inside? We have 1 plus 1 over u to the 2015. Now it's going to be flipped times 1 plus 1 over u squared, and I should not have written dx. Instead of dx, we have already found that dx is equal to negative 1 over u du. So let's write that in. So dx is negative 1 over u squared, so let me just put negative sign out front, and u squared is going to go down in the denominator, and we have du. So now let's try to simplify this just a bit. So we have integral from infinity to 0, but we can flip this to 0 to infinity and just make this positive 1. Because remember, integral from a to b of f of x dx is equal to negative integral from b to a of f of x dx. When you're changing, when you're exchanging a and b, when you change a to b to b to a, you have to flip the sign to negative. So I'm just flipping it back to 0 to infinity because that looks nicer. And that's what we started with. So let's try to go back to the original state. And I'm going to flip this negative back to positive. So we have positive 1 divided by 
1 plus 1 over u to the 25th n, and 1 plus 1 over u times u squared, we can distribute that to make it u squared plus 1 du. And it's not nice to have this complex fraction. We don't want to have 1 over 1 plus 1 over u to the 25th n. Easy way of getting rid of 1 over u to the 25th n down below is to multiply by u to the 25th n to both top and bottom. That's going to get us u to the 25th n du up top, and down below you can distribute once again to get rid of u to the 25th n that resides down below. So here we have it. So what do we know? We know the first integral we started out with, integral from 0 to infinity of x to the 25th n plus 1 times x squared plus 1 is equal to this integral. And this is actually pretty interesting because this integral is same thing as integral from 0 to infinity of x to the 25th n dx over x to the 25th n plus 1, x squared plus 1. Now I'm using the substitution x equals to u. That's one way of thinking about it. Or you can think of this u does not matter. We don't have to use u. You're just picking u as an arbitrary variable. So we can use y or we can use x as long as we replace every single variable. So this thing is actually very interesting. I just want to point it out. It's just telling you that these two integrals have the same value even though you have a different quantity in the numerator. Realize that denominators are the same, but the numerator is changing from 1 to x to 2015, but the numerical value of the integral stays the same. I think that's very interesting. And also, because the denominators are the same, you may think of something that we can do. Maybe we can relate this integral. Let's say the value of this integral is i. Maybe we can make some equation out of this. Maybe we can turn this back into this form because they look very similar right now. So if we can modify it just a bit, so we can maybe, if we can prove that this integral is equal to 2i plus 1, for example, that's going to tell us 2i plus 1 is equal to i, then we can find the value of i. So maybe that's a way of attacking this question. So can we, is it possible to write this integral in terms of this integral that we started out with? And as we are about to find out, the answer is yes. So let's try to do so. So we have integral from 0 to infinity of x to 2015. And let me write it like this, x to 2015 plus 1 and 1 over x squared plus 1 dx. And we can actually divide this out. And why do we want to divide it out? Because when we divide it out, we know we are going to have at least one and you're going to have some remainder. And when we have one, we're going back to the state. We're going back to i. And that's fantastic because now we can relate these two integrals. So let's do so. Let's try dividing this out. x to the 2015 divided by x to the 2015 plus one. This goes into x to the 2015 once, multiplying by that and subtracting this gets us negative 1. So we know we get 1 minus 1 over x to the 2015 plus 1 when we divide it out. So we get 0 to infinity and we have 1 minus 1 over x to the 2015 plus 1 times 1 over x squared plus 1 dx. Okay. So what do we have now? Now we can actually multi now we can distribute, so let's do so. Integral from 0 to infinity of 1 over x squared plus 1 minus 1 over you have x to the 2015 plus 1 times x squared plus 1 dx. And realize we can now split this integral to integral from 0 to infinity of 1 over 1 plus x squared dx. And we can actually evaluate this because integral of 1 over 1 plus x squared dx is arc tangent of x. Because when you differentiate arc tangent of x, you get 1 over 1 plus x squared. So we can actually find this and realize the integral on the right. We have the integral that we started out with. That's i. That is precisely the same thing we started out with. So we have, we know all of this is equal to i because we started out with i. And we have i is equal to integral from 0 to infinity of 1 over 1 plus x squared dx minus i. So what's that telling us? We know 2 times i is equal to this integral. 1 plus x squared dx, or the integral that we started with, i, is simply 1 half of this integral. So the only thing we have to do is to evaluate this integral 
and we're done. And we can evaluate it because we get arc tangent of x and you're going from 0 to infinity. So what happens when you plug in infinity into it? We'll think of what angle has tangent, where, where, what angle do we have to take tangent of to, for it to approach infinity? Think of tangent as you remember that tangent is basically opposite of world adjacent. So in this case, tangent is delta y over delta x. So that's tangent of data, which is basically the slope of this line. So we basically want the slope of the line, which is tangent, to approach infinity. And to do so, we have to make our data to make the slope increase indefinitely. We have to make data approach pi over 2. We have to approach this angle of pi over 2. So arc tangent of infinity is going to get us pi over 2. How about arc tangent of 0? In that case, we want slope of 0. And angle of 0 is going to get us precisely that. So that's going to be 0. And we have it. The answer is pi over 4. So let's go all the way back. The answer to this question is pi over 4.